2025 is a year of AI agents, they say, and you've probably seen those videos all over your YouTube recommendations. Hundreds of NA10 tutorials promising crazier and crazier things, like an automated viral video generator, or an NA10 workflow to get new new leads and close them for you, or even a simple NA10 workflow that will replace your whole marketing team. And you're sitting here seeing this and thinking this must be amazing. So you block out some time and try it out, and you probably get super overwhelmed because these tools are pretty complex, despite what you hear from the NA10 YouTube game. So you're wondering, is it worth watching five or even seven hour full NA10 tutorials? So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how coaches should approach to like NA10 or make.com, uh, whether you should just hire someone to do it for you, learn it, or simply just skip it. And I'll show you a couple of tools that will help you build NA10 workflows literally step-by-step -step and just copy pasting what it says, even if you don't understand it. But first, let me tell you a few things that nobody in the NA10 space will tell you. Because let's be honest about what's really happening here. Here. The space is full of tutorials that assume that you're a bit techy. I mean, despite what they say, those tools are quite complex and they do require you a bit of tech knowledge. So, you know, I work with people that run online businesses every day and most of them don't even know how to connect their domain to their website. So when you show them those tools like make.com or NA10, they do get overwhelmed pretty quickly. The other problem is that most of these workflows that you see in those tutorials can't really be used in real business. I mean, no offense to these creators, they're doing a really good job with these tutorials, but real business owners will not implement a almost good enough workflow in their business. If it's not working 99% of the time, they just won't use it. And the last problem that I see is that those workflows that you see in those tutorials probably won't work off the shelf for your business. It's not like you can just implement the template into your account and it will just work. You, you have to know how to customize it for your business and your specific needs. So does that mean that you should just skip the whole thing? Well, obviously I'm a bit biased, but I don't think so. I think learning those skills now will be the one that pay the most dividends in the next few years. Learning AI and AI automations in 2025 is kind of like learning SEO in 2005 or paid ads in 2015. So how about just hiring someone to do it for you? And I mean, that's definitely an option. That's what I do for my clients. And it depends on the size of your business to see if that makes sense for you. Just understand the cost for a simple workflows is gonna be around a thousand dollar range. And for more complex systems, especially the one that have AI nods, because every time there's an AI nods in a workflow, there's just more prompting and refining and tuning. That's probably gonna be in the three, five, eight thousand dollar range. And even if you do wanna hire someone, it's good to learn a bit yourself and be generous enough to know what you're looking for when you're hiring someone. All right, so enough talk, but practically, Joey, how do you actually learn this? And here I think there's gonna be three questions to ask yourself. What specific problem am I solving? What does success look like? And exactly what is the automation output supposed to be for me to be satisfied and implement it in my business? What is the simplest path to get there? And here what I mean is, what is the smallest number of steps that I can use to get to the desired outcome? And then based on that response, do I really need a workflow? Because that's something else to determine. If something that you're trying to automate only takes you 30 seconds every day, it's probably not worth automating. And here is a real cool tool to help you just sort of determine in this uh, and if it is worth automating literally the name of the website uh, so if i was to uh, do lead gen for 30 minutes every day five days a week uh, and let's say this automation will be used for for a year then if i spend less than 5.4 days to build that automation then it would actually be worth it but if i was to do you know 30 seconds of something every day uh then you know if i, if I spend more than a couple hours it's probably not worth building then finally you can actually open your n18 account and start building a workflow and I promised I was gonna show you a couple tools to make this a lot easier, and here it is. So it is a custom GBG built by NHK. Sorry if this is not how you pronounce the name, uh, but this is a super useful assistant to help you build those NA10 workflows without really knowing anything about NA10. I mean, uh, I'm gonna walk you through an example here and you'll see that I don't need to understand what I'm doing. I'm just gonna literally follow the step-by-step -step instructions, copy paste what I'm seeing and get the desired results that I want. Okay, so let's walk through an example. And I'm gonna take an example that is very specific. And I do this on purpose because for most businesses, when they think about things they want to automate, it will probably be something that they won't find in a template and they won't find in a video tutorials. They have to be able to customize it for their business because they have very specific needs and things they want to automate. So let me take a very specific example and the workflow that I'm trying to build here is gonna be that when I have a email coming through, so let's say I have an opt-in for people to get into my mailing list, and then that email is coming from a quote unquote real business domain, uh, then I want the workflow to be crawling their website, summarizing the information and things that I should know, and then send me an email with sort of a summary of what that business does so that if I'm interested, I can just reach out to those people. So again, very specific, but again, if you don't quite understand what I just said, I essentially, you know, when you have an email, so let's say that I have, here is a sort of random company that I pulled up. If I have an email that comes through my my inbox and says, you know, info at uh, vincyworks.com. 
then it kind of shows me that this is a real business domain, you know, rather than uh, a gmail.com or, you know, a outlook.com. This would be an actual real business that opted into my mailing list. And I could just do a personal reach out to those people and see if they want to check out my services and sell them whatever I have to sell. But of course, to do that properly, I would need to know more about what they do and the kind of you know, services and needs they may have and problems they may encounter. So this automation is going to allow me to not have to do the research, but just get a summary of what the business does and then give me their email. And then all I have to do is just to send them a customized message uh, to reach out and see if they're interested in my services. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, that's fine. Let's just run through the workflow. And I hope that kind of makes sense as we, we go through it. And so back to the NA10 assistant, what you can do and what make it maybe easier for you is just to use the uh, vocal uh, option just to tell the assistant what kind of workflow you're trying to build. Hey there, so I'm trying to build an NA10 workflow so that when someone uh, opts into my email list, they send me an email. Uh, I will have the workflow to first of all check out if the domain for that email is um, a real address, if it's an actual website and an actual business, then if it is, I want to uh, scrape their website and uh, get a summary information, something that would probably be done by an AI, uh, scrape the information and then send me an email and a summary of what that business does and just a few info that I would need so that I can reach out and potentially sell them my services. So the end result would be that I get an email with a summary of that business and I can reach out to them if I wanted to. That is my prompt. It's really just that easy to uh, ask the assistant what kind of workflow I'm looking for. And let's go ahead and pop that in. So what I recommend you do here is that you ask it for a step-by-step -step instructions. The other option would be that it gives you a JSON code that you can directly import into your annotated workflows. I recommend that because I actually want to go through the different steps and be able to customize it a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and ask for the step-by-step -step instructions. Give me the step-by-step -step instructions. And I'm just going to ignore the question here because it's just giving me the instructions right away. Okay, so here is a step-by-step -step, and I'm in NA10 with a fresh new workflow. Uh, and so the first step and the trigger that it gives here is a webhook. Now, now maybe, maybe you don't know what a webhook is, but for the sake of this tutorials, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the trigger and say that this should just be a form. Now, maybe the form for you is going to be from your CRM, whether that's HubSpot or MailerLite, MailChimp. Active campaign. Uh, again, for the sake of this tutorials, I'm just going to use uh, the native N88 form workflow as the trigger. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just for testing and just to show you uh, the step by step for for this. But if you wanted to make this work for you, then you can just say that you know my CRM is HubSpot. Help me make the trigger a hub spot form and then it will just walk you through the different steps to um, authorize the credentials for hubspot and then just make that first trigger a form that comes from hubspot and then just make that initial trigger a hubspot form again for the sake of the tutorial i'm just going to stick to the native form here and continue and real quick if this custom dbt method already saved you 20 hours of tutorials and then smash that like button it helped me know that you like those shortcuts and that you want more of the tutorials in the future so the second step is going to be a set node again i don't have to understand what this is I'm just going to follow the instructions blindly. And for this work, I've just filled out a few things for this initial step. Again, you don't have to know how to do this. Just ask the assistant on how to do this. But I've implemented just a test uh, data so that we can proceed with the process. So the second step is going to be set. And it's telling me to name the feed name to be domain. So I'm going to add a field. The name is domain. And I'm just going to take the code here and paste it right here and try to test it. And then I see an error. So that's going to happen a lot if you start from scratch and if you don't understand everything that you're doing. Uh, and that's totally fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a screenshot here and ask the AI in the node 2. I don't get the domain name. Obviously, what we're trying to do here, and that's what this, the description of this step is, is that we're going to try to extract the domain name from the email, this part right here. And that should be what pops here. But as you can see, we're not getting this. So again, I don't need to understand what's happening. I just see that it does work and I'm going to ask the assistant to fix it. Okay, so then what it tells me is that uh, the problem is going to be the capitalization of email and that's the only thing to correct. So uh, the problem was that in the JSON field here, the E wasn't capitalized and we need to capitalize it. So, and so I'm just going to fix this and what you can see is that now, oh, I shouldn't, yeah, there we go. 
Uh, now what am I gonna test? It's gonna properly output the domain and that's what I was looking for. So the next step is gonna be to check if the domain is existing. I mean, sometimes you have a uh, an email where the domain part is actually not a real domain or a real website. And in that case, I maybe don't wanna reach those people because they don't have a website. They might not be a um, working business. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to do an HTTP request. Again, you don't need to know what that is, but all you need to do is that you need to find it in the next nod. So I need to set a get and I need to copy this URL. Again, I'm just copy pasting exactly what it tells me. I don't have to understand much of what I'm doing here. And here the response format should be a JSON. Now, if I don't know anything about NA10, I would come in here and I don't see anywhere that allows me to set a response format. Now, I know that this is something you're just gonna hear, do the response and precise the format. But let's say again that you didn't know, I would just take a screenshot and ask it, I don't see a response format uh, field. And then it would tell you that this is a uh, additional option that you need to turn on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with this. That's the step and then I will see the output, which is telling me, again, you don't need to understand exactly what this is, but essentially it's telling me that I do see um, an API so that a domain is valid and is returning an actual website. The next step is gonna be to check if the website is reachable. Then once we have that, we can go ahead and scrape the, the homepage. Uh, extract the HTML. If I wanted to here, I would probably ask it to scrape more than the whole page. Maybe I want to scrape a few more URLs. Again, I just would ask the assistant and it would add those extra steps to not just scrape the home page, but scrape the whole website. Um, then we're going to extract this into HTML because that's what a AI nod will be able to understand. Uh, then we're going to have a summarization done by the AI agent. Uh, with this prompt, you can probably uh, reprompt it or change the prompt. And then the last step is gonna be to send an email to myself with all of that information, and then I can have my final flow and diagrams. Again, here, as you can see, I haven't used any of my knowledge of NA10, really. Uh, I've just followed the step, copy-pasted. When there's an error, I just tell it, uh, and then it will return to me what I need to do. I do wanna show you another tool that you can use, uh, and that's gonna be the internal AI assistant in uh, NA10. And that's gonna help sometimes uh, just as well as the um, custom GPG, although I found that it's less uh, practical and less step-by-step. -step. It's gonna give you more sort of general answers. What I do like what it does is sometimes it's gonna it's gonna both crawl the uh, documentation and sometimes it's also gonna crawl the um, NA10 community where they have a, you know, a forum and a bunch of people posting about the problems and people response. And that's gonna be a response that you don't necessarily see uh, here if you have more complex needs and more complex workflows that, you know, this assistant uh, might have limitations. So if you have those, then this is also another tool to help you build those automations without having to understand, just copy pasting, resolving the issues, going through the nods and getting the outcome that you wanted from the workflow. So once you've gone through all of the steps here and all the nods, what I would do is that I would just obviously just run a test and see if the, you know, the outcome, the last nod and the email that you get to yourself is gonna be something that you want. If it worked, uh, I would throw at it a few variations, uh, you know, fake domain, and a fake email address, just see if it detects it. If it doesn't, then again, just ask the assistant uh, to refine the process and make sure that it does. And at some point you will get the workflow that you wanted, again, without having to understand coding or anything in A10, uh, just by following the step-by-step -step and refining the process as you go. Okay, so let's recap here and have an action plan for your next workflow. But first, write down in your own words, the things you want to automate. Then just pop it into custom GPT and ask it to give you the step-by-step -step on how to build this in A10. Then just follow the instructions, ask for more explanations if you need to, or for adjustments as you go through the process. Do some troubleshooting, give it some real data, give it some real tests, and refine the results. And then you're pretty much good to go. You didn't have to watch those seven hours tutorials, and now you have a functioning annotated workflow, and you can go ahead and implement it in your business. I think this is the most practical way to use those tools. Uh, and I did make a video about the general impact on the coaching industry of AI and AI tools. So if you wanna check it out, you can go ahead and do that right now. If you wanna keep up to date with the latest uh, AI automations and workflows, uh, then go ahead and subscribe to my free newsletter. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.